<clears throat> Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message from John 8. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day, Jesus said. He sought and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is our text. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we sang at the end of our intro today, and most Sundays when we sing it. So we sing at the end of Psalms. So we sing at the end of various portions of the liturgy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fine. We are acknowledging that that is in whose name we have been baptized. We are acknowledging the existence of our triune God, as today the church observes Trinity Sunday. But today we focus on that next line. All of our readings today focus on the eternal nature of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This has great import for us as Christians living in the faith of a triune God, that this isn't something that's evolving as it goes along. Some people tend to think that God the Father existed from the beginning. He made heaven and earth. And then about 2,000 years ago, there became a son. Just out of thin air, the Christ appeared. And then 50 days after Easter, for the first time ever, the Holy Spirit came. And that God is choosing either different ways to present himself, that there's only one God and he just presents himself in various forms, or that God created Jesus and God and Jesus then came up with this idea for the Holy Spirit and the whole thing's kind of been evolving as it goes along. As it was in the beginning, it is now. God the Father from everlasting to everlasting. God the Son from everlasting to everlasting. God the Holy Spirit from everlasting to everlasting. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. God said, let us make man in our image. In the likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You see that duality, plurality thing going on already <coughs> at creation. The triune God saying, let us make a man. Male and female, he created uh, in God's image, he created them, him, I'm sorry, he created him, male and female, he created them. And the two are one, even as the three are one in the divine Godhead. And now we have these examples in all of our readings today of different characters in the scriptures before whom Jesus was, and he is and will be forever. Before Abraham was, I am, Jesus said. And he's not getting his tenses mixed up there, but I am was the very name that God told Moses to tell the Israelites, who's told him to go set them free. When they ask who sent you, tell them, I am has sent me to you to set you free. Before Abraham was, I am. Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. <coughs> How did that happen? Well, here we see in the Bible uh, what we call type and anti-type. Something happens in history that foreshadows an even bigger event in history. In Genesis chapter 18, we see Abraham minding his own business. Sarah, his wife, is cooking in the tent. And... Here come three men. And these three men Abraham addresses as, O Lord, come into my house. And these three men tell him that when we come this way again next year, 
your wife Sarah will have a child. And then Sarah thinks that's a pretty good joke. She laughs. He says, because of this, you'll name his name Isaac, which means he laughs. And the word of God came true. Now that is a type of something that would happen later on. For the promise that these men gave to Abraham, that the Lord gave to Abraham, was that he would be the father of a great nation, one great nation, and that through this nation, he would become a blessing to all nations. That boy foretold by those three men with the one message there came true, and he became the father of Isaac. Father Isaac became the father of Jacob, also called Israel, the 12 tribes, which gives us finally the lineage 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the Christ. And so here we have all these things coming true, and the greatest blessing of that great nation of Abraham, Jesus Christ, now becomes a blessing to all nations. So Abraham saw the day of the Lord and rejoiced. 14 generations later, David, now in the epistle lesson, <clears throat> or lesson from Acts, as it were, Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, Peter said. <clears throat> Pretty good. Peter's very good at stating the obvious. His tomb's with us to this day. But, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath on him that he would set one of his descendants on the throne, foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades or Sheol, neither did his flesh see corruption. That's the verse we sang in the intro. But God raised him up, and of that we are all witnesses. The Lord, uh, David not, did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. As it was in the beginning, it was in Abraham's day, it was in David's day, and it will be in our day, and in the day that he comes again in glory. How does this give us comfort? How does this give us peace? How does this give us any hope, knowing a fact? <clears throat> We know that Jesus was there at the very beginning of creation. He who through whom all things were made, he without whom nothing was made that has been made, knows what this world was like before we ruined it by our fall. He who was an agent in making this wonderful world is even now preparing for us a place in heaven that he may come to take us to be where he is. In the meantime, out of his great love for us, while we were yet sinners, he came to this broken world, the eternal God, leaving his throne in heaven, humbling himself and taking on the very nature of a servant. In being found in human likeness, he humbled himself even to death, death on a cross. The eternal God, Jesus Christ, then died. And he died for you. And he died for me. And he died for Adam and Eve and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and David and Bathsheba and Solomon and Peter and James and John and all those who call upon his name. In order that we might have faith to receive this, God the Holy Spirit continues that divine breath hovering over the waters, not only of baptism, but of the whole world, hovering over us, speaking in that, that which is true, the wisdom from on high that never changes. The world will assail the church and Christ and his ways. They will assail us for not keeping up with the times, for not changing our message, and if the church does change its message, then they will ridicule us for just pandering to the masses. Wisdom, however, still calls. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is personified as a woman, 
But in the clear, it is clear in the study of the book of Proverbs that this wisdom is a type of our Lord Jesus Christ. And hear what this wisdom calls at the entrance to the city. That is the place where all people gather to get the news. To you, O men, I call. My cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginnings of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its field, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits so that its waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman. You and I can trust a God like that. One who has been around from the very beginning and whose love for us never changes. Whose access to his grace never changes. Whose way to eternal salvation through the cross and the open grave that Christ has prepared for us never changes. The languages we use to speak that gospel may change. The clothes that you and I wear to hear that message will change. But that message itself and the love itself and the reward itself shall never change as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. God loves his creation. He loves his chosen people. He has made us all his chosen people in love in Christ Jesus. And by grace, through faith, we are heirs of a new kingdom, a new creation which shall never perish, spoil, or fade. The eternal God is only beginning our life with him forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.